Joe Rogan's latest comedy special, Burn the Boats. He shot this special live on Netflix on Saturday, August 3rd, 2024, filmed at the Majestic Theater in San Antonio, Texas. And that was one of the most impressive parts of this special was the fact that it was shot live, shot and aired live. A very ballsy move that I'll share the backstory of in a bit. But it's something that I'm enjoying seeing ever since Chris Rock, which if memory serves me right, Chris Rock after the Will Smith slap and his latest comedy special, that was like the first, or I thought that was the very first live Netflix comedy special. But I believe that when I broke down that comedy special, I forgot to mention Louis C.K.'s special that aired prior to Chris Rock's. And I think that one was live as well. So I don't know which one of those two was exactly the first live special or if it or if maybe there was another one that I just don't don't know about. But they were around the same same time. And that's when Netflix started attempting this, these live showings. I think Chris Rock's was by far one of the most anticipated ones because everyone was just waiting on him to speak about what had happened, I think, like a year before at that point with the slap heard around the world. You know, when Will Smith made that poor fucking decision, that bitch move that I don't think he could ever live down. And that's coming from someone who's such a big fan of his hugely disappointed but when he slapped chris live at the oscars on stage and chris rock's live taping of his comedy special was just so highly anticipated because it was the first time that folks were going knew that they were going to hear his side of that story then after that the the roast of tom brady which was amazing that was also shot and streamed live and I think that gives like another level of edginess or like a, an added layer or dimension of excitement to a comedy special it's kind of like marrying being actually in the room when you go watch comedy live like at a club or a theater with the benefit of knowing that you're going to see very worked out polished material so I definitely like that Netflix is doing this and the backstory of it is for Rogan specifically, which if you're a fan of his podcast, yeah, you may have heard, and I'll just paraphrase, is that his manager calls him and says that Netflix wants to offer him a live comedy special instead of, you know, like the usual uh, taped versions, taped and edited and highly polished versions. And he immediately declined it. The way he tells on the on the pod, he was like driving home and then starts having like in, internal dialogue with himself and asking himself, why did you just deny that so quickly? And he came to the conclusion that he was just scared. He was like, I don't want to do that shit. That's like so much more pressure. And his knee jerk reaction was, again, just to decline it and say no. And then he winds up calling his manager back either that same night or the next morning and saying that he's going to think about it for a day or two. So don't tell them no just yet. And then ultimately he decided to do it because of the fact that he was afraid of it. So he wanted to take it on head on, you know, face that fear, conquer his inner bitch as is a, a motto of his. So practicing what he preaches essentially, which I thought was pretty dope. And as much of a D rider as I am of Rogan and his podcast and, you know, being the inspiration behind myself doing this podcast, I've never considered him one of my favorite comedians. But that said, this is probably his best special to date. And it's fun for me as just such a big podcast fan to see how his personality from the pod and even some, some of his thoughts and insights shared on there translate into the medium of stand-up comedy. Just from a creative perspective, that's interesting to me. And here are a few of the bits that I thought were pretty funny. He, of course, has a few bits on aliens, and he's speaking to the criticism of, you know, if aliens do exist, why doesn't a spaceship just pull up above the White House? You know, like the iconic image that we see from the like the Independence Day movie poster type of thing. And he's like, when we go fishing, 
when you go fishing, do you look for the president of the lake? It's like, no, you just pick them up by their lips and you take pictures with them and you drop them back in. The fishers are like, what the fuck was that? Can you imagine being a fish in that environment, you know, just swimming around going about your day? Something just rips you out of your environment by your lips, flashes lights at you that you don't know even know what the fuck that it is takes pictures of you drops you back in and you're trying to like tell tell your fish friends uh, about that experience and his point is that that's what aliens would do to us he was like if he was an alien he'd take a guy that's in the middle of a forest in arkansas and teleport him into space and explain to him how time is just an illusion and humans are a product of evolution meant to only give birth to ai and then drop him back in the middle of the forest in arkansas and let him explain that shit to his friends which speaking of aliens by the way if it's something that you guys are into listen to the episode of jre with luis elizondo on it parts of it get slightly irritating but you know, understandable i guess with all the stuff that luis elizondo said that he can't speak to because he's still part of the government so on and so forth but the stuff that he did share kind of makes you gives you pause and, and makes you think so it's an interesting episode to check out if you're into that kind of shit another bit that i appreciated which was more of like a like a slight like a dig speaking to like the cancellation attempts and stuff like that that he went through during the the covid era and as a fan of the pod again speaking objectively trying to take my my bias out of it as much as one can but as someone that has seen clips of him taken out of context and reported on and blogged on and vlogged on from anyone from just an online hater to you know prestigious outlets like CNN, for example, when you have already seen a full episode in its full context or listened to one and you see the snippets that they take and sometimes paste together, they're just like so so clearly hit pieces is all you can call them and mischaracterizations of, of things and it's like oh i see what you did there i see, I see what you're going for but about that whole era he mentions this one offline that like this transition that i appreciated which was that we lost a lot of people during covid and most of them are still alive he also speaks about traveling a lot for our comedy obviously and for the ufc and he says how the airport is the perfect place to be high, which is counterintuitive because you think of like drug sniffing dogs and you're paranoid because you have to follow procedures and, and do certain things. But he says it's the absolute perfect place to be high because nobody's going to notice. Everybody's anxious and on, on edge and, you know, shuffling around for their boarding passes and passports and going through security lines and nobody's paying attention to you. And everybody's just in this heightened state already. So you, if you're high and paranoid, you're kind of just like fitting into that mold of what's going on around you. And he adds that in the airport, everybody tells you exactly what the fuck to do every step of the way from get in line. No, go into this line. Get out of that line. Sit down. Take off your shoes. Don't lean back in your chair. So on and so forth. He was like, so it's super easy because you don't have to like keep track of those things. And then he does this act out, which Rogan is actually really good at within his comedies when he acts out certain bits. But he does this act out of the TSA guy checking him in and just like patting him down while simultaneously asking him like UFC questions, <laughs> which is pretty funny. I like this line that he said. I forget what he was speaking to, but it may have been just to the like woke cult culture in general, but how crazy people like the concept of someone just being crazy went away like the flu did during covid he speaks about one of the the articles that tried canceling him for being homophobic and he mentions like the the quote that they used in the actual article he just criticized them in the sense of you guys are just fucking lazy he was like if you want to take me out of context I give you a lot of shit to work with. And I've said so much more crazier shit than <laughs> what they actually used. And the last one I'll share here, just because uh, I really appreciated the analogy, was this whole lesbian chunk that he had and how guys definitely wouldn't care 
if they were on a date with a girl for the first time and she told them that you know she used to have a girlfriend or was in a long-term relationship with a girl prior to that one that in the guy's mind it's kind of like woo, low miles it's like a, a barn find like a 67 mustang that's under a tarp <laughs> but yeah shout out to joe it was a special that i enjoyed it was the whole shooting and streaming it live thing just made it more of like an event an event like must tune in type of thing that i liked and definitely added something to it so i would highly recommend it and you can catch the replay on netflix joe rogan's comedy special burn the boats streaming now on netflix